Hi there and welcome. You're listening to Living Fit with Laura Mack, the radio show created for the health conscious fitness enthusiast who wants to feel good on the inside and look great on the outside. I'm your host, Laura Mack, and today we have a really special guest. I'm so excited to announce that we are going to be talking with Kat Painter, who is the owner of Fitness X Magazine. She's also the chief and editor. It's one of the most prestigious up-and-coming fitness magazines that you can buy on the newsstands or see online. She has a business administration degree in marketing management from the University of Alabama, and she's been in the fitness industry for over 11 years, working in a variety of positions such as group exercise instructor, certified personal trainer, sports nutritionist, weight loss consultant, fitness director, and fitness company owner. She's even in the last eight years competed and placed in the top five in the following categories, fitness, figure, fitness modeling, bikini, and even powerlifting. Kat, we'll have to have you tell us more about that later on. But currently, Kat is serving as an advocate for the Fighting Obesity Campaign, the Save Passage, and also the Dream Again Campaign. So as a fitness, an avid fitness enthusiast, she has used her entrepreneurial skills and started up several different types of boot camp programs in different areas, such as Alabama, Tennessee, and here in California. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our very special guest, Kat Painter. Kat, how are you doing today? Hi, Laura. It's a beautiful day in California. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> well, what day isn't, right? <laughs> yes, I know. Always with you, smiles, and, and I love you, Laura. Thank you for inviting me to your show. I'm so excited. Thank you. Well, you know, let's get started with some basic background information from you. I did get to rattle off some really great highlights of your bio, but how did you actually get started in the fitness industry? What was it that kind of pulled you in or intrigued you with regarding the fitness industry? Oh, boy. Well, most people, when they ask me that, they assume that I've always been in it since I was little. And um, to a certain point, I, I was very active as a kid with dance and gymnastics and cheerleading. But then after I, I left high school and started college, I was very serious and into the, my studies and also um, hanging out with my friends. And I kind of forgot how to just be active and mm. let that go, let my body go. And, um, just it's started amazing how quickly that can happen, huh? Yeah, it happens. And you know what? I was living in the South, and as you know, we eat a lot of bad food down there. Right. It's, it's called comfort food. And so, you know, I, I was an emotional eater, and mm -hmm. whatever my friends ate, my peers, I would eat with them. So right. um, how I started was I was starting to feel really bad, um, having these dizziness attacks and not feeling very good and and it all started like in college, but also through my corporate years when I was in the corporate world, um, I was just dealing with the pain in my back and my neck and not having energy. And I was tired of it because I was always feeding myself just sugary snacks and Cokes and all of the bad stuff I knew mm. about, but I didn't want to do anything. So, right. um, yeah, and, and I had to find out through my family doctor that I had a serious problem and I could end up having diabetes like <gasps> my father and my grandmother. Oh, my so goodness. That was a little bit of a trigger, but it wasn't really something that I wanted to take on immediately because he said mm -hmm. diet and exercise. And when I thought of diet, I thought of, oh, I can't eat. Right, you thought everything really was going to be taken away, <laughs> yeah. and yeah, so much for all that comfort food. But you know, it's so funny too when you talk about comfort food. It yeah. it might taste good at that time, but then there's so many times that there's guilty feelings afterwards or sluggish feelings, and it's it doesn't always bring you an energetic or happy feelings that comfort food. So it's really important to be cautious with that. That's so true. Very very true, and. You know, I was in that endless cycle like so many ladies and even men had to go through, and mm -hmm. I didn't know how to stop it. So um, right. it just took me a picture. I saw myself on a beach, and mm -hmm. I asked one of my friends, I said, is this how I really look like? Because I never <laughs> thought of myself that way. Like, and they're like, that? <laughs> hey, you look great, Chad. You look great. I love, you know, I mean, what's wrong? I'm like, well, I just didn't know that I gained weight. I mean, I knew I gained some weight because I had to buy clothes or a fiber 
six dress sizes too big or uh-huh. you know, larger than I was over the span of seven years. And wow. it really didn't bother me. But when I saw that picture, I said, I really need to do something because I've never had the back fat ever in my life. And, you know, I, I could deal with it, but I couldn't deal with not having energy and um, the sugar uh-huh. levels going down and, and nearly passing out at work and in my car. And, you know, it was scary. Right. Well, yeah, and it kind of gets in, like, going back to the, the type of food, too, you know, going in that carb cycle and the, the high yes. fat, high sugar, it, it definitely is going to play a part on your energy and, and being able to sustain energy to be functional and thinking throughout the day to be able to be good at your job, even, exactly. let alone anything else recreational. Oh, yeah, I know. It, it, was, it was so hard because I, you know, I kept on thinking, C A N apostrophe T, you know, Ah. people all around me were saying, you know, you're this age, you don't need to be doing this anymore, just accept yourself as you are, Mm -hmm. and I said, well, Mm -hmm. I don't want to accept myself anymore after seeing this picture, and I don't want to deal with having pain in my back, because I know it's preventable, and also, um, I want to eat well, and take care of my body, so I don't have diabetes, because it's preventable, too, so. Right, very true. It's that funny that you mentioned part, that. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, with it being National Diabetes Awareness exactly. Month here in November, that's such a yes. great point that you bring up because it can be reversible and it can be eliminated. And, and it's one of those things I think a lot of people think, oh, once I have diabetes, that's it. I can't really do anything. But that's almost not doing anything is, is a, a choice, and that's not the healthy choice either. No, it isn't. So, yes, I, I have a lot of friends and also family members that have diabetes, mm-hmm. and it's preventable. My dad, you know, is able to, he has type 2, uh-huh. and um, he's been able to reverse it. You know, it's oh, just something yeah. that I might have, but because I'm living the healthy lifestyle now, eating healthy and frequent small meals throughout the day, mm-hmm. and also exercising several times a week, you know, I feel great, and, you know, I've, I've maintained my weight, and um, it's not about how you look, it's how you feel. And that's right how I on. started. Exactly, Absolutely. You know? Yes. So, yeah, and just let, having that energy and enthusiasm to last throughout the day, that makes such a big difference. You know, I mean, exactly. just being around, you know, whether you're focused on your career or, you know, you have that time spending with friends or family or, or children and being able to play with them, it makes a, a big difference carrying, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 extra pounds can yes. really wipe a person out. Yes, that's so true, you know, and the way I started it was, you know, I had to join a gym because what I was doing was not working, you know, running mm-hmm. around the block and uh, doing it by myself was really boring and I'm a social person, so right. I decided to join the Gold's Gym in Huntsville, Alabama, and uh-huh. it was a scary feeling because I would walk through those doors and I knew that there were bodybuilders and powerlifters and all these right. strong and strong women and men, and so what I would do was just scurry along and go into the group exercise room, mm-hmm. and that was like my safe room where I could do whatever. <laughs> Right. Without being watched, you know, I was with mostly ladies, and there's a few men in there, too. Uh-huh. And uh, that's where I started, you know, for the first right. year and a half, two years I was in there, and I ended up teaching several of the classes, but um, wow. they kept me accountable, and that right. was my family. I, was, I couldn't wait to get out of work or school and go straight to the gym, and that was the one hour or two hours where I would just, you know, be in my own little world, and be right. like, wow, you know what? Nothing else matters but, you know, myself right now because for so long I was doing things for other people and Mm -hmm. other things and I forgot about myself. Well, just listening to you, Kat, it sounds to me like you've done a couple of things. For one, you changed your support system around you, Um, whereas as before it sounded like, you know, you were eating the same things as as some of the people that were supporting you, which was more the comfort foods, which wasn't serving you. And then, two, by taking the initiative and joining a gym um, and finding a new community with friends and support system, those, by making those two changes, it sounds like that's what really catapulted your fitness success. And, that, you know, and I, I think this raises a good question because uh, going into – some people might find, especially women, going into a gym such as a Gold's Gym, which might have more of a stereotype of more of a – hardcore type of gym what was it that 
helped you overcome that intimidating feeling of going into a Gold's Gym versus going into, you know, um, some some other smaller gym or some other gym that's not um, as fitness oriented? What was it that made you get over that hump of feeling that intimidation of going into a Gold's Gym? How did you do that? Uh, well. You know, the first day was intimidating because I've never stepped in the gym in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, but once I got to that room, I was fine. So what it, what it was was the people that made me feel comfortable, like it was my mm-hmm. home. It was right. their home, and they welcomed me in. Nice. Um, and then I got to know the members, you know, a little bit, you know, because it's more like a cheers kind of environment. Oh, great, it's a smaller yeah. gold's gym. Mm-hmm. And everyone knew each other's name, and in the South, everyone wants to get to know you. So, <laughs> you it. know what I mean? It's like they're like, who is that? You know, I mean, it's kind of like people are in your business because, you know, that's the way it is. Right. So, anyone wants to get to <laughs> I know, yeah. I miss it sometimes, though, because, you know, we live in LA and there's so many people, so no one, you know, even wants to know who you are, you know? But right. It's a different environment from, out here, for sure. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it's like, there, it was like, who is this person coming in through the doors? Oh, like, you know. So they were very welcoming, and I loved it, and I loved the energy and all the positive people, and that's what got me going was at first I was intimidated because they had these, you know, physiques that were very admirable, but at the same time a little scary for me, right. you know. And wow. I didn't know. It was scary because I didn't know if I could attain, you know, get to that point where, wow, that woman has a nice physique and, I don't know if I can do that. You know, it's still, I can't. I don't know. I don't know about if I can do it, if I have the willpower. Right. And, you know, let these people make me feel comfortable, and if I had any questions, I could ask them. And that's how I got comfortable was because their friendliness. And I wow. know not everyone gets that in every gym. Mm-hmm. I was just fortunate to have that. Yes, that's so true. That's a really great thing. You just ended up with a great support system. And that's, that's another thing to, to really mention, that it does make a big difference on who you surround yourself with. You oh, know, yes. And what becomes normal in your world. If you're surrounded with a lot of fitness or health, and, uh, health enthusiasts, then it really can make a difference, and that becomes your norm versus if you're surrounding yourself with uh, people who are not as conscious as what they're eating or what kind of activities that they're involved in or inactivity for that matter. So it sounds like right. you really were able to make some great changes. What what was it that catapulted your fitness competitive career? Um, well, you know, just after like the second year, actually I saw it like back in 1999. I, I remember watching ESPN and they mm. had a show called Fitness America. Uh-huh. And I was like, whoa, what is this? You know, I was so <laughs> interested in these routines. These women were like, whoa, they are ripped. Right. And they can do one-arm push-ups and all of these <laughs> great things, strength holes. And I'm like, you know, and they're dancing too. I grew up with dancing and I was on the stage and it just sparked something in me. I'm like, oh, my gosh, these women are like in their 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, and even older. And they're having fun and they look great and they look like they feel great. You know, I want to be just like them. So that's what, you know, I, I wanted to be like them. And I started thinking after I started lifting weights, I, I hired a trainer. And I said, you know mm-hmm. what, my goal is to do Fitness America pageant. Excellent. And he said, you can definitely do it. You know, it's the power of the mind. So I was gung-ho all about it. I said, I'm going to do one next year. And I just set that goal. And I, you know, I made that. And it was a great experience because I met so many competitors that were, you know, like where I was that, you know, they were in, I, I could relate with them, you know what I mean? Right. And it was like the greatest thing to have that challenge with your nutrition and, and see your body change. And, you know, the most important thing was feeling great, having that energy throughout the day, right. you know, and also helping others, you know, along the way, even right. though, I, you know, even though um, I might not be this top competitor or whatever, people – People ask, and, you know, I was willing right. to give the piece of advice to them mm-hmm. and um, encourage them to do whatever they wanted to do because a lot of women, especially, they they want something, but mm-hmm. they a lot of times they don't think they can, they can do it just because of what society tells them or all these expectations put upon us. Right. And I love to tell women, you know what? Don't listen to anyone around you. You know yourself. You know what you want, and you should go after it. 
You know? Absolutely. Words yeah. of wisdom, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> So the older I get, the wiser I get, I guess. <laughs> it's so true. And, you know, I think you must have been a huge source of inspiration for the people, especially at that Gold's Gym, for them to see you at your start point of never going into a gym to, you know, a top five competitor. Oh, my goodness, that's fantastic. And to probably for them to see that transformation and yet – you um, being helpful and encouraging to others along your own journey, helping someone else along her journey is, is, you know, priceless. Yes, and you know what? It's so infectious that, you know, I give to one woman and she gives to other women and even men, people in her family, all her friends. Mm-hmm. And that's the most rewarding thing that, you Isn't know, it? one person can – it's the gift of yes. help, you know. And I love that, you know, because I, I love hearing stories about, wow, you know, you, you changed my life, but you know what? I changed other people's lives. Exactly. You, and it just goes on and on. I'm like, this is a great thing, you know. It truly so is. I love that. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I, I have loved personal training for so long, because you actually mm-hmm. get to see the results of the client, but not only for that particular client, but you can see the other areas that it touches their lives, whether it's in their relationship or their business decisions or their family, how they have positively influenced their family. It's, it's just so uh, contagious, like you say. You know, you get a result from one person, and then they, you know, inspire five other people and then those five people continue on that inspiration and it's it really can happen it's 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 such a great thing to be a part of and to actually witness and see it happening yes so true and you know what you know there's so many people out there that you know they have a gift to gift you know to give others information and and you know, stop watching TV, guys, because, you know, sometimes when you see these infomercials about how to lose weight and, um, you know, you can – it's all about just looks and, and buy this gadget, you know. Right. There's so many people out there willing to help you and so much um, sources of information that mm-hmm. you can have on the Internet. You know, you just have to be careful where you look and, and who you talk to. Right. It's very true. And that actually brings us up to another question I wanted to talk with you more about was sources of information and and finding reliable sources. Because, you know, you could look for a question on the Internet that's health and fitness related, and you can get seven different, you know, responses for that, which would be seven different completely and seven completely different answers. So Mm -hmm. it's it's pretty amazing. But I would like to, to mention that your magazine, that you're the chief and editor, the Fitness X magazine, what a great source for people who are avid fitness enthusiasts and any type of athletics, looking for routines, looking for ways to get into shape, how to have healthy nutrition. Tell us, what was your inspiration in getting started with a magazine? Because that's quite a big project to tackle, to get competitive (laughs) in that arena. Oh, yeah. You know what, Laura? I never in my wildest dreams would have thought that I've been um, ended up as a publisher and, and the editor in chief uh-huh. um, of a magazine. You know, I might, may, you know, maybe I thought about it when I was a kid, but my, my dream <laughs> was to be an actress and, and mostly a dancer. Right. You know? But it's funny where life will lead you, you know, and, and fitness just opened doors for me. You know, when I decided to change my life and take care of myself. Um, I started giving in other ways, and, you know, I ended up with this magazine because I was a writer, mm-hmm. and um, I came in as a writer over about two years ago, and okay. it just catapulted into this wow. because I love to write, and I wanted to contribute a little bit more, and I was assigned this position uh, with Bill Aguirre, who is now my fiancé. Our company's joined forces. Um, my company was GoFusionFitness.net. Okay. And um, we decided to change Fitness X from uh, when he had it, it was back online um, magazine, and it was geared to extreme bodybuilding. Ah. And so he was in the Olympia, you know, okay. for bodybuilding, and he would go there, and he was published two times in Muscular Development, 
Okay. And I believe the years of 2005 and 2006 or 2006 and seven. Okay. But that's where you started. And um, after having talking to several people, he noticed that mainstream people who he wanted to uh, spark an interest with was not interested in the bodybuilding world. Mm-hmm. And so he decided to shift gears, but it was very slow. And then um, his uh, assistant decided to have me come in and, and write. And mm-hmm. then the more I wrote, I, I wanted to say, hey, you know what, I think we should change this even more into a mainstream type of magazine where people can really relate because, you know, I came from a bodybuilding um, competition world, mm-hmm. but I didn't stay there. I, I was out in the mainstream as personal trainer, group fitness instructor, and right. nutritional counselor, and the list goes on. But, you know, that's not what the majority wants. And, you know, they don't think they can attain that physique. And, you know, like I said, no one really wants that anymore. Right. It's a bit of an extreme sport. And it's not um, – it takes a, a certain type of person that to achieve that and to want to, want to achieve that, whereas, yeah. you know, living a healthy lifestyle, you, the whole entire American population can achieve that. Right, right, because we're so busy as Americans, you know, uh, juggling a career and family and – uh, personal life, everything else, you know, it's mm-hmm. be daunting, you know, and, and to to be competitive in in that world where it, it really is to me an extreme diet that right. is not attainable because not everyone wants to do it for one thing, um, but it's admirable at the same time, you know. Right, exactly. It's great, but yeah, I, I love the magazine. Um, it's a vehicle for all women. It's a women's magazine mm-hmm. primarily, and um, there's a lot of great things, articles. Um, where women share, you know, their passion for health, fitness, and wellness. And when I say wellness, it's spiritual wellness. Mm-hmm. So there's not a lot of magazines out there that I know of that are willing to take on writers to talk about their faith. Exactly. And when I say that, in, in God. So, um, exactly. you know, there's a lot of controversy with, with that, and we've gotten emails and all that kind of stuff. But, you know what, this is America, and I believe that, you know, people are allowed to share their views on mm-hmm. life and, and what inspires them, and that's why we put it in the magazine. So, um, right. and I'm I'm proud of that because you know not a lot of people are willing to say, hey, you know what, I believe in in God, and I believe that you know I I can do whatever I want because I have Him in my life, and that's mm-hmm. the way I I run my life now. I right. didn't always run my life with God in my life. I never thought that I could do it. I, I, I thought I could do it all by myself, and that wasn't right. the case. And so, you know, that's just my life right now. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's a very touchy subject. Like, you know, you say God, and like, oh, no. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's true, because so, then people, people come up with their own uh, identification or, or stereotype immediately as soon as you say that. But yes. I tell you what, though, Fitness X Magazine is such an impressive magazine by the way it en- encompasses. It's a full, healthy living, including health, nutrition, spirituality. It's it's really a complete magazine, and people really hopefully are checking it out, and that's why the publication is growing, and that's why the, the readers are increasing continually. So it's just impressive, Kat. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, there's there's a lot of growth, and we have a lot of projects going on, and we're taking on more people to work with us. Um, we've got a lot of staff members coming in for the new mm-hmm. year. Um, I mean, that's how much is growing. And, um, yeah, it, it's great. We're going to have two new issues next year. Okay, that's um, what I wanted to talk with you about. Yeah, Tell us a little bit more yeah. what we have to look forward to in 2012. Okay, 2012, the two issues I'm talking about, is we're going to have a special, we have a women's issue, um, Fitness X Magazine. We're also going to do a men's issue. Nice. And it's going to come out um, sometime next year. Great. Uh, either summer or fall, and we're going to have a women's issue too, but I can't really tell you what kind of issue it will be. It's a secret, huh? Yeah, it's a secret. Top secret. So, <laughs> yeah, we're already working on it right now. We have, we've been working on it for a while, and we're like, whoa, we've got so much content, so oh, much good fantastic. stuff. We might as well have you know, some more issues. And a lot of people have been saying, hey, you know what, I'd love to be part of your magazine. Um, it's just a matter of getting the staff members, you know. Mm-hmm. 
and we're, our website is growing. We're always putting new content on there, and mm-hmm. we've got a YouTube channel, and there's all this stuff. We're going to events and helping you know a lot of uh, charity events and meeting mm-hmm. people. What are Every a few of the charities people. that you're, you've been working with recently? Um, well, I've, we've gone through the Safe Passage, which is um, it's an organization to help um, battered women, domestic mm-hmm. violence. And so, um, I, yeah, I just started with them, and they're just a great group. They're in Orange County. Okay. And um, if you want to look on, on their site, I, I think it's safepassage.org. Okay. But um, it's dear to my heart. You know, there's a lot of women out there that unfortunately have been um, in domestic violence. You know. Right. And um, I, I really want to touch people's hearts and say, hey, you know what, you can change your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not always about health, fitness, and, and wellness. You know, we, we have to help other people outside of that. Right. And, you know, and what – Fitness X is doing with these organizations is, you know, we're helping them, we're supporting their their cause, but at the same time, we're going to get some of these women, um, we're going to change their lives and get them healthy also. Right. So that's that's some of the stuff we're doing. And also Dream Again campaign is to fight against uh, human trafficking. And this okay. is something that I've been wanting to do for many, many years, but didn't have the heart to do it back then. Mm-hmm. And... Um, it's unbelievable the kind of things that um, the stats that you see and, and, and that it's here in L.A., it's here everywhere in the United States and also in the world. So it's number one to um, drugs. Wow. Um, so it's it's something that I think that if every person just in the city of L.A. could support, Mm-hmm. You know, we could do so much for other people. What a difference it would make. Yeah, that's a yes. startling fact that you had mentioned. Yes. So, you know, that's that's not easy to talk about, but, you know, um, we can definitely change people's lives by just, you know, um, finding an organization that you want to um, help. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, it's not about just taking care of yourself. It's about also helping people outside of, of your world and saying, hey, you know what, you know, I can do something, I have the means, you know, I'm healthy, I have this or that or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, and, and at the end of the day, you feel great because you've helped other people. So Absolutely. Many people. Yeah. Yep. It's so true. And, and giving back and, you know, whether it's time or service or even money, it, it can it can be any of those, but just the fact that you're you're taking initiative to be able to give back and, and you've chosen a couple of different charities, not just one, but a couple. And that's, mm-hmm. that's great cat. And it's makes fitness X magazine stand out even more, um, as a unique and special magazine. Yes. And, and, you know, if any ladies and, and especially if you want to help out too, I mm-hmm. can give you all the information we can go to the events and, and get involved, you know, that'd be great. For sure. So, Kat, just to wrap up, where can people find Fitness X Magazine? Um, Fitness X Magazine, they can find it on fitnessx.com. Okay. And if they want to read it for free, and um, they can download it, and you just look, go up at the top of the page, okay. and it will say, get your magazine. And it will show all our past issues and our current November, December issue. Um, just want to let you know, too, that our magazine is now bi-monthly. Great. So the next issue will be January, February. Okay. And um, if you want to get the print issue, you can order it, and all you have to do is just click on the print, get print issue. Okay. Or um, you can also look at the YouTube videos for you know anything on health, fitness, or wellness. And right. Okay. It's all the forums and all kinds of stuff on there. So uh, all our advertisers are there as well, including your ad. All right. <laughs> so, not to talk fitness, yeah. So, you know, all our models have been modeling in, in Laura's beautiful, beautiful clothing. And thank you so much for letting them wear your outfits. They're oh, great. it's my and pleasure. I love your outfits, too. <laughs> my pleasure. Well, they, they look fantastic in it, and, and you have a, a great photographer that takes their photos. So everything is, has been really fantastic from – from the beginning, working with uh, Fitness X magazines, it's it's been quite an experience. Thank you. You've yeah. been so giving, and like you know, I've I've looked up to you for so so many years, 
and you are one of the driving motivators, you know, in my life. Oh, thank so you. So I just wanted to share with all our listeners that Laura Mack is the best person you can ever meet. <laughs> Oh, thank you, know, you Kat. <laughs> it touches the heart, and that's what our magazine does. Is Our writers touch the heart of women and also men, you know, mm-hmm. that you can do it and not to give up in life. Absolutely, to keep so. on going. And, you know, whether you have an obstacle, then you just go around it or go over it or go under it, but you just keep on going forward. And, and before you know it, you're going to reach your fitness goals, and you'll see your fitness success flourish. So. Exactly can absolutely happen. Well, Kat, thank you so much for being a guest here today on Living Fit with Laura Mack. It's been wonderful having you. Thank you so much. Could I add one more thing? Sure can. Okay. Well, I wanted to say that we're having a contest, our first contest, and it's for the March, April 2012 it's a cover model contest. Oh, so I'm nice. going to have that on Facebook. We're going to post it this weekend with all the details. Okay. So, and you can also check it out on fitnessx.com for all the Great. details. Great. So we can get to that website. And yep. what is the Facebook uh, website called? It's um, fitnessxmag. Okay. So Facebook slash fitnessxmag. Mm-hmm. Okay, or great. Or you can just go straight to fitnessx.com. Okay, perfect. So they can go right to directly to your website at yes. fitnessx.com to find out uh-huh. more about the the modeling contest for the March April 2012 issue. And do they just yes. register there? Do they need to submit a picture? Yes, they're going to submit um, the, their photos, and okay. also they're going to have a video also. Oh, fantastic! So all our readers are going to get to know them. We're going to pick the top 21. Ooh, fantastic! Yes. So we're all excited, and I know a lot of ladies are ready to submit. So um, let's get the ball rolling next week. Sounds great. Well, Kat, thank you so much for sharing your story with us about your career in fitness and competitions and being a leader in fitness and the editor-in-chief of Fitness X Magazine. It's been a pleasure talking with you today. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. And be sure to check out my new book, Fast and Fierce Fitness, Made Fabulously Fun, the 12-week program to get you in shape without hours at the gym. You can visit my website at lauramack.com for more information, as well as today's guest, you can get more healthy living insights. I'm Laura Mack. Be fit, be smart, and be happy.